all of a sudden you put in your profile. Obviously, I joked about it. You're the most Googled yeah. woman on earth. You know, that was based on your Twitter profile. You know, Nina Turner comes out and says, if somebody says they're a woman, they're a woman. Not a tough concept. Your response is, I'm a woman, right? And you do that. And you've left it on Twitter. Yeah. Tell us why. Because I am. You don't believe me? You're a woman? Are you misgendering me? I have to choose to, you're, choose to agree with you, right? My pronouns are she, her. No, but the, the level of, it's all a joke, right? But there's actually a very sinister undertone to all of this garbage. And the sinister undertone is that your baseline instincts and your baseline senses are how you've always perceived the world, right? They have to attack them at some level. And they did, I mean, it's fantastic with COVID. COVID, I know we can talk about it now, it was amazing. I used to say to people all the time, who have you seen die? Do you see a pandemic? Yeah, on the news. No, 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 no. Do you see ambulances rushing back and forth everywhere? Do you see bodies on the street? Do you see lines outside of hospitals? Do you see a pandemic? How a pandemic would look? Do you see a pandemic? Oh, but my grandma, my friend's grandma, your friend's grandma was 96, okay? So I'm, I'm not saying it's not sad. I'm saying she was 96. Do you see a pandemic? No, you don't. But they have just lied to you so many times that you're ignoring your own eyes. That's the final stage of the slave mind. It's the final stage of it. The final stage of the slave mind is when your eyes tell you this is green, but the news told you it was blue. So it has to be blue. So when they're doing these things, it's nothing to do with caring about the mental health, of gender ideology, none of this garbage. They're deliberately attacking you and saying what your eyes tell you is wrong. Because if they can make you start to admit that your own eyes are wrong, then what, what other defense do you have against propaganda? If they're gonna give you a lie, but your own eyes can't protect you, well then it's over, isn't it? So all of these things they're doing, all of these things are a deliberate assault on the senses. And they do it by controlling the language. If you control what someone says, over time, you'll control what they think. You don't think what you don't say. It's very hard to live a life for eight years, if you're lucky, and think things and never say them ever. If you think it, you're gonna say it sometimes. You're gonna give the idea, get some feedback on the idea, build on the idea, change the idea, whatever it is, through discussion. If you never, ever, ever discuss it, you're not gonna think it. So they say, this is the truth, ignore your eyes, and you have to say it's the truth. You can't say it's not the truth. And the people who are in charge of the world, they think generationally, they have time. Right now it's a joke. 200 years from now, it won't be a joke. 200 years from now, it'll all be fucking standard operating protocol. The grandchildren, the people who are in charge now, that, that's what they want. They'll pull it off in the end. Slow, incremental damage. They'll take, they do it with nearly everything. They'll take all your rights away. They'll take 100 of your rights away. They'll upset you. They'll give you 99 back. We're good again. Don't worry. And, they're, and the grandchildren, the people in charge of the world, get what they want in the end. They think generationally. So now we're at the beginning of it. It's all a big joke, right? But especially before Elon had Twitter, when you couldn't say the truth online, when you couldn't say my eyes see X on the internet without going to jail or losing your account or getting a hate speech charge in the UK or some garbage, they're controlling what you think. And on a long enough time frame, what you think becomes true. If two, we all believe two plus two is four, but with a hard enough psyop, if you can't say that, if you have to say it's five, on a long enough time frame, math breaks down and everyone's just going to believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5. You, That's what happens. You think we're going to get there? Have you ever seen the experiment? There's a really interesting experiment with monkeys and a banana and a water spout. Have you ever seen this? They put five monkeys in a, in a room. And at the top of the room, there was a banana. And when one monkey tried to climb up to get the banana, they turn on the hose and splash all the monkeys with ice cold water. So the monkey would come back down and wouldn't get the banana. And when another monkey would go to climb up, they'd splash all the monkeys with ice cold water. And what would happen over time is, when a monkey went to climb the rope to get the banana, the other monkeys would jump and pull him down and hit him and teach him a lesson. Don't go for that banana. If you go for that banana, we get splashed with water. Mm -hmm. Then they'd swap one of the monkeys out. Now there's a new monkey in the room who doesn't know the game. The new monkey would attempt to climb and all four monkeys would attack the monkey, pull him back down and kick his ass. He knows if he climbs the rope to get the banana, he gets attacked. He doesn't know he gets splashed with water if he, doesn't, if he gets banana. He doesn't know the game, but he knows if I try and climb, they're going to attack me. After a certain amount of weeks, they change another monkey, and another monkey, and another monkey. Over time, you have five brand new monkeys who have never been splashed with water ever. But nobody goes to climb the rope, because if they do, they're attacked by all the other monkeys. And nobody even knows why. Damn. That's just how it works. If you climb that rope, we beat you up. 
That's just how it works. That's what they're doing on a long enough time scale to humanity. There are already X amount of people on the planet. There's already a population, X percent, who knows what it is, who ignore their own eyes and repeat what they are told. You can't say that that's not what they're doing because they're already successful with X amount of the population. They've begun. The seed is there. 2%, 3%, 7%, who knows? They've already proven they can do it. Now it's just a matter of not shutting up and hammering, the, the, hammering at home. Make sure they repeat it in schools. Children are young. They believe things are impressionable. Hammer it to the kids, especially. Put it in every Disney movie. Just give it to the kids all day long. They grow up sooner or later. Long enough time frame. That's it. It's generational attacks. But do you think that's going to work, though? Because I, I, let, let me maybe unpack the question. So uh, uh, I'm from Glendale. I went to Glendale High School yeah. and Stolloy, right? So yesterday, a big fight broke out in Glendale. Massive. It's all over the news. Yeah. So the fight was over these parents, Armenian parents, who were for four years are like, listen, we don't mind if you're gay, but don't teach our four-year-olds yep. about transgender. Yep. Don't put these books in. Yep. Finally yesterday, big old brawl. Yep. It's all over the news. They're fighting. Armenian parents are like, we're not going to tolerate this. Yep. This is just not going to happen to us, right? Then you go to YouTube. YouTube comes back and says, hey, uh, starting such and such, all the videos that were put up about you know, the election and, you know, whether it was a fake election or not, we're no longer going to give a strike or take those videos down. Yeah. They can stay up there, right? This is totally fine. Then you see uh, uh, the Surgeon General uh, comes out, the attorney, I don't know if you saw this one here, he comes out with an article saying, new Surgeon General advisory raises alarm about the devastating impact of the epidemic of loneliness and isolation in the United States. This is the same guy that was part of the camp yeah. is now saying, Hey, our epidemic of loneliness and isolation has been an underappreciated public health crisis that has harmed individuals and social health, our relationship, our source of healing, et cetera. Et cetera. This is the same guy that said, wait a minute, lockdown, you know, do this, do that. Yeah. So the more and more arguments are coming out against even ESG. I don't know how close you follow ESG where, why are we doing this? Did you see how much Target lost? $10 billion? Did you see how much Bud Light lost? 25%, 12%? This is no longer working. Well, if you want to, like, even one of the insurance companies I work with closely, it's one of our biggest ones we work with. Yesterday, I see their post on Instagram. Well, because of Pride Month, we're doing this. I know the people in that company, but they just raised a few hundred million dollars. One of the companies they gave the money to yeah. was one of these bigger guys, the Vanguard, BlackRock, and, yeah. you know, State, State Street. Street. Yeah. So when you take money from those guys, you have to have, you have, to have a certain ESG yeah. score. Yeah. But a lot of people are now saying this is not a proven formula that it works. Stop doing it. So do you think guys like you, who are maybe in business, who are maybe in church, they're saying, Pope, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Who are maybe in the Christian uh, church, who are maybe in different denominations, yeah. they're in the military, sitting back saying, I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. So meaning, successfully, do you think these guys will be able to manipulate their in agendas down everybody's throat, or there's going to be certain people standing up? Well, certainly I'd like to believe that the tide is shifting and we're starting to get some degree of victory against the matrix as a whole. I do believe that the public sentiment is shifting. However, the fight is long and it's very, very difficult because I agree with what you're saying. Only a year ago, I would argue it completely and say it's basically over. I'm actually very impressed with the back, with the, with the ground we've taken back with common sense. But these people operate so slowly. It's generational, these attacks. The attacks we're suffering now were started in the 70s and 80s. They take it over time. And yes, it's fantastic that those parents fought back against that school. That's fantastic. But there's a whole bunch of schools where they didn't. And who knows, okay, that particular book might be removed. A softer version will be implemented. Next year, maybe that book will come back. They, they have all the time in the world, all the money in the world, and they're, they're insulated from these things. That's what's most scary. You talk about Vanguard and BlackRock and all these companies. What's actually scary about it is the people who are making these decisions are completely insulated from the consequences of their decisions. They're in Switzerland. They fly private. They don't care. You think they care about any of this crap? They'll say, oh, do this. Oh, it's caused a riot. They don't live there. They're nowhere near it. They have nothing to do with it. When is the last time you've even seen a politician? Do these people even exist? They're not even near, they have nothing to do with where they, they operate. It's actually amazing. When I was in Dubai once, I think it was about three years ago, I saw the leader of Dubai walking through the mall. I was like, he's a person and he just walks through the mall. I was so impressed. Imagine a, a Western leader walking through the mall. Never, never, never in a million years. It's just pieces of paper, private jet, vanish. All these people are in charge of everything, don't even live in these communities. I do believe that yes, we can win, because I don't think you can fight to the best of your ability if, if all hope is lost. 
I do believe we're winning and taking ground back, absolutely. And I believe that we're doing that by purely telling the truth. What our eyes see is what's real. And we're doing it in the name of God, because you're saying Armenians are strictly religious. I think God and religion is one of the best ways you can combat these things. However, the fight is never ending because they're never ending gonna try and implement. You talk about ESG scores, it's garbage they put together. That's not gonna end. It's just gonna get worse and worse and worse over time. And it's kind of unfortunate and it's kind of upsetting that we still have this system where the people can be unhappy with something. The peasants can revolt to a degree, but does it even really matter at some point? You get to a point of power where you don't care about money. And then things are really difficult, right? When you control everything, you don't care about money. I mean, I'd like to actually argue, we talk about Bud Light. This Mulaney, whatever is it? Dylan Mulvaney. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, Dylan Mulvaney. Sweetheart, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I know we've damaged their share price, et cetera, et cetera. I would believe people who own that company or beyond that company, I don't think they truly give a fuck. In both. I don't think they care. Maybe they care a bit. I don't think they're losing that much sleep over it. Maybe they are a little bit, but I'm saying you get to degrees of power and levels of power where you don't care about money. I'll give you a perfect example of it. I know we keep going back to this, but it was actually a massive pivotal event in awakening so many people was the COVID scam. I said this multiple times in many different countries I visited. I said, if they cared about you, they would have left everything open, maybe put a tax on everything, extra tax percent, whatever, and built hospitals. Why didn't they do that? Why did they, why did they lock you all up? Because it's a mass compliance exercise. They want you to comply. They don't give a shit about your health. They just want you to comply. They want to test how many people comply. And people were saying, yeah, it's all about money. It's all about profit. And I said, that's actually a very optimistic way to look at it. I think that if you destroy the economy and lock everyone in their houses and destroy everyone's businesses, you don't care about money. You're, be you're beyond money. You're above money. You want power and you want control. Because once you become actually rich, you learn that the world is all just about people. Right? The best things in your life are people. The best things in your life are family. The things that make you happiest are your friends. Your life experience is the best if you have good team around you, good assistants, good helpers, good staff, whatever it is. It's all about people and controlling people. What do you want money for? To get other people to do what you want. That's all money is. I want a Lamborghini. I can't build one. He can. I will pay him to build me a Lamborghini. It's all about people. So once you get beyond a certain level of money and there's a certain level of control you want that money perhaps can't buy, buy, then you think, well, I don't care about the money. I want the power. I don't want money. I want them to stay in their houses. Why? Because it's not so. I don't have to. They have to. Ha ha ha. It's funny. And I've said that and sat with people and said, do you really think people in charge of the world are so petty that they would lock everyone in their houses so they can laugh? I say, yeah, I actually do. I think if you were born into a wealthy family where money has precisely zero value and you are arrogant to the moon because you're this whoever and you believe you're God's gift and you don't, a Ferrari ain't going to make you happy. Who cares about Ferrari? Ferrari's free. It's pennies. You don't care about any of this shit. What makes you happy is everyone respecting you and being afraid of you. To a degree, you're going to try and influence some power and fear. I think that's what it is. So I think a lot of these companies, when they're doing these things and they're upsetting people, etc., yeah, it's good that we're fighting back. But I also think part of them enjoy the show. I think part of them genuinely enjoy the show. I think part of them go, you know what? Let's do, this is, this is insane. Let's do this. Ah, oh, they're fighting. Uh -huh. I really believe, it. I, I, I know it's a pessimistic way to look at it, but I think they enjoy the show apart. I don't disagree with you in, in regards to that. I can see that how, you know, you see it in movies or scenes where, you know, condescending, arrogant, you know, and they kind of want to, they enjoy bullying the guy that can't help himself, right? Hey, do this. Hey, clean up. Pick this up. <laughs> look at this. He'll do anything that I need him to do, right? I yeah. fully believe that those types of things exist, but, man... Empires have fallen so many times it's true. because they thought they can get away with murder. It's true. And then eventually people said, listen, stop. You're not going to do this to me anymore. We're not, we're not going to take a stand. And typically when that happens, you said it earlier, uh, you know, what is really why, what's going on in Glendale or some of these other cities that people are protesting? Why is there an organization called Gays Against Groomers? Yeah. Gays Against Groomers? What? What do you, why, what are you doing? He says, man, I just wanted to be gay and leave me alone. I'm not trying to be, you know, grooming kids. That's not my job. I just want to be gay. Leave me alone. We've made so much progress. Yeah. These guys, I'm not that guy. I'm not yeah. this person, right? Yeah. So I think the part that they fear the most, if you read Communist Manifesto, there's a book written by uh, Cleon Skousen. I think he was like a former yeah. CIA agent for like 15 years. He wrote a book called The Naked Communist. Yeah. One of the things he talks about how getting rid of God, well, they're succeeding in that area, but not fully yet. Yeah. You know, getting rid of the family nucleus, well, we already know 
What is the purpose of this LGBTQ movement? What is the purpose of this transgender? What is the purpose of, let me get this straight, this person cannot buy a gun at 13. This person cannot go in the military at 13. This person cannot vote at 18. This person cannot own a car at 13, but they can transition the most, the most important decision of their lives you're okay with? Yes. To, now, that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make sense to me. I think you said something at the beginning, the, the concept of being tolerant. You know what, yeah, it's okay, we can have gays. Oh, it's okay, we can have this. It's okay. Uh, listen, man, uh-uh, you've crossed the line a little bit. I think faith, family, kids, values, principles, they fear the hell out of it. Absolutely. And I think that community is rising up. No, you're totally right. But you made a really interesting point there about empires falling. And this is where I kind of feel like we're inter entering a new stage of the world because it's never really done before. Because typically when empires fell, the world was far more polarized. If the empire fell, there was nowhere for the corrupt dictators of said empire to go. The empire's fallen, or I say, let's say England fell. You can't, it's very hard to get exile in France. You could do it a little bit. But let's say America fell today. Let's say it completely collapsed and it fell. The people who archetyped that downfall, do you think they'd be in America? Do you think they'd be sitting there waiting to get scooped up? Do you even know who they are? Can you recognize them? What's their name? Even if you could, do you think they're in America or do you think they're skiing in Switzerland? This globalism, the whole point of globalism is that they don't care when empires fall. When you globalize the world, then you have a chess board. Ah, I lost the knight, doesn't matter, Pope Bishop. Sack the queen, who cares? There's so many things I want to say, but I don't want to die. But there's truth, this can be proven and shown even with this current proxy war. Europe and all the gas prices and the inflation rate in Europe has gone to the moon to fund this proxy war in Ukraine. Why has this happened? Because America's in charge of everything, and America has decided that Europe has to bear the brunt of the bullshit for its proxy war. You're going to have higher gas prices, you're going to have inflation, you're going to have massive unrest, you're going to deal with it all. And we're going to sit over here and insulate ourselves because we have the global reserve currency, and the war is going to happen over there, and everyone's going to die, and we're in charge. So now you have this globalism. How can an empire fall when you have basically two camps? <laughs> There's two teams now. There's two sides left. So it's, it's a, it's, it, I agree with you completely about empires falling, but I'm saying if the empires fell in days of old, the kings would be strung up. But now when the empire falls, nobody notices. It doesn't matter. We don't know who the kings are. We don't know who's in charge. We don't know where they are. They're not going to be anywhere near the trouble. That's for fucking sure. There's going to be somewhere else. Oops. Oh, well. And do they really care? Do, do the people in charge of the world care if America's crime rate goes up 1,000%? Would they lose sleep at night? I actually think they do partially because think about it. So I'm, I'm with Andrew Schultz and I'm taking your position with him. Yep. Okay, you know who Andrew Schultz yep. is? Good guy. And he says, you know, part of me that gives me comfort is knowing these guys are so obsessed with their money. He may be wrong, This yep. is, we can debate this. Yep. They're so obsessed with their money that there's no way they're gonna let America fall because if America falls, everything else falls. So they're, they're gonna go just as much as they can to control, but not enough to get the machine to break because they're so in love with money and power, they don't want to give that up. Well, I hope that's true. I would love for that to be true. But my argument is that these people are already so deeply entrenched, they print the money. They'll print the new money. They don't care. If they cared about money, COVID wouldn't have happened. They closed the entire economy. I don't think they care about money. I think they, con I think they control the world to a level where you want to eat? You want war? Like, I don't think they give a shit about money. They'll print the new money. They'll change the name of it and print the new one. At a certain level of power, I think they're so above and beyond all of our concepts of how the world works that they don't have any interest in any of it. I don't think they give a shit. I think if you were to go to these people, whoever they are, and say, we're going to take your money away, they would just laugh at you. You think you can take my money? You think you understand money? You think you're going to damage the stock market? You think I give a shit about the share price? I think there's a level beyond all of this. And they're the ones who truly are running things and they truly have no influence. And in fact, the harder they damage the economy and the, the more damage they do to money, the more people are dependent on governments to eat. That's where communism comes from, right? The more yeah. poor we get, the more you need the government just so you have food in your mouth. How can you resist the government if they feed you? You can't. So yeah, like, and I sound pessimistic and I'm not pessimistic. And I do believe the answer to all of these things is free thinking and truth and God and community standing up for themselves and changing the general consensus. I do believe that. Because to a degree, although we talk about people who run the world, to a degree we run the world. Because our tolerance level is what runs the world. There's more of us than them. So to a degree you say, who's in charge of the world? Well, I like to say, well, we are. 
Because it's all about, we're, we're, the, abu we're the abused wife in this relationship. How much crap are we going to put up with? We're, we set the limit. They're going to come at us with everything they can, right? We set the limit. But the problem is they try very, very hard to one, increase our limit to the max, which yeah. is tolerance. Yeah. And two, to divide us to the point where we don't ever unite long enough. I love what happened in Glendale, what you just told me about. That should be happening in every single school across America, all of them. Oh, they would love it if you retweet the video for them and give more exposure. I will do. You know, it, it's, it, it, when you're saying this, I'm reading a book right now, Robert Moses. I don't know if you know who he is or not, power broker. This is a guy, it would be a very interesting guy for you to study. This is the guy that built New York, yeah. okay? And he came up and uh, uh, hated, a uh, uh, complicated person, misunderstood. Uh, the more they would push him back, the more he stood up. The more they would say, no, this is not fair what you're doing, the more he would even say, I'm going I'm to go more, even more extreme. And so if, if in New York you mention the name Robert Moses, there's going to be a camp that's going to say scumbag, racist, white supremacist, all this stuff. And there's a side that's going to say, this guy built a bridge. This guy did this. This guy did that. He, he, he would make it so hard for a certain community to go to the nicer community. He would put the car, you know, the bridge so low that trucks couldn't go through because he didn't want the bad people to go into this. Like he was that... Yeah. Sure. And one time in, in the book, they talk about how Robert Moses, he says, look, the one thing about Robert Moses, he could give a shit about money. He could give a shit. about. It, it was all about his influence over. So I agree. There's certain people that don't care about money. Yeah. They're more driven by control, influence, all of that. The part that, uh, uh, you know, we're talking about the movie Fury, Vinny. And you give me this whole thing about Fury, the scene where Shia LaBeouf is reading out of the Bible and he's crying while he's reading this. And then, right, if you want to text me, what's, what the, and, and then afterwards, you see uh, Brad Pitt quotes exactly what scripture it was, but they never showed how much faith he had. Yeah. And the whole point was, I'm ready to die. Yeah. We know we're here. Yeah. This is going to be happening. We're in the tech. There's no, I think the people, there's a part about Trump. Uh, I had a girl on Whitney Webb. I don't know if you know who Whitney Webb is. We had her on. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And we start talking about different things. And I, yeah, I've been having a lot of weird guests on lately and making a comparison between the Kennedy family and Trump. Pisses a lot of people off. Yeah. But those two families, forget the fact that one's a Democrat, one's a Republican. They were both anti-establishment. Yeah. They were both anti-military industrial complex. They were both anti-CIA, anti-FBI, anti-all of this stuff, right? Yeah. We saw what happened with Kennedy. We saw what happened with Reagan. We saw what happened with Lincoln. All these guys were anti-establishment guys. We saw what happened with Trump. Yeah. The part about Trump that, you know, made the other side uncomfortable is okay we can kill the guy that's been the strategy for a long time you can't really do it today as much because they fear one thing that they're the most jealous and envy you know what that is they don't want they do not want to build a martyr yes. they fear building a martyr yeah. because that's the ultimate yeah. high that they want to get they yeah. do not want to build a martyr right so okay we're going to humiliate the crap out of you. We're going to embarrass the crap out of you. We're going to publicly try to do this. We're going to come in between you and your kids. Yeah. You know, uh, we're going to go get your daughter to be more yeah. LGBT. We're going to get her to be on this side. And we're going to pin this. That's the strategy. Yeah. We're going to put the, the break the entire family apart, right? And he still stands up there. Yeah. And, and to them, it's like, what the hell do we need to do yeah. for you to you know, just sit down and be quiet, not willing to do it? That's right. Do you think, again, going back to it, more of those types of men and women who are misunderstood and complicated stories. They, they're not perfect, far from it. Yeah. More of those guys are the ones that are saying, yeah, it's just not gonna happen on my watch, man. And that's what we need. And the, the, by the very nature of being the kind of person who's principled enough to risk his own personal situation in life, if you have principles that strong, you're gonna be disliked by some people. You're never going to have a person who is principled enough to take risk to his public detriment for the good of what he believes in, who's liked by everybody. That, that's a logic fail, right? Because he has principles which are hard lines, and people exist across the entire spectrum. So there's going to be people who exist outside of those lines. That's what I liked about Trump. He's not perfect. Of course not. But he says what he means. He means what he says. I actually disagree with him on many things. But he says what he means. He means what he says. And that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of a man who says what he means and means what he says because he can't be bought because he's principled. He can't be bought. Even now, me, if they were to come to me with $100 million and say, we'll sponsor you with this company, it's $100 million, you just have to shut up, I'd say, no, I don't want your money. I don't want the money. I don't need money. There's nothing else to buy. I bought everything. I don't need it. 
I buy principles worth more. So, and that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of principles, and it goes back to the original point. They're trying to remove all of our morality, all of our baseline understanding of things. Minect is an application which allows you to take a minute to connect with influencers from all around the world. My name is Andrew Tate, and I'm available to speak directly to you on Minect. That's, that's how they in inject you with the slave mind. That's exactly what it is, and you're right. History has always been that way. And now it's under conscious assault. I've never said this before, I've never even thought this before, this is a brand new thought for me. But I would like to think in times of old, in history, perhaps everybody was the same, everybody was principled, everybody had parameters, but they were different parameters. Perhaps they were competing ideas. But I think in the modern world, it's not so much competing parameters, it's just people who believe in things, and people who don't believe in anything besides what they're fucking told that changes every day. You have the empty brains, the, the slave minds and the people who actually stand up for something. And the free slave, thinkers. And the free thinkers. But the slave minds, you can't say, well, they believe in a different ideology because they don't. They believe in what they're told to believe in on that particular day. It changes. They don't have any true core belief. They just repeat. I talk about the matrix all the time and people say, why did you choose that terminology? And I chose that terminology because it is perfectly accurate in describing exactly what is happening. The matrix is a computer program which is designed to control your mind so that your body can be used to power the machines. That's exactly what happens when they make you watch the news to control your minds, so you continue to use your body to work some garbage job and suffer from inflation and power the machines. The machines being soulless people who are in charge of the world. But there's also a million other different ways you can compare the matrix to the real world. In the matrix they say, anybody can become an agent at any time. If their mind is not unplugged, they become an agent. If their mind is not freed, they turn into an agent. You can see that in real life. Mention COVID to an NPC. Mention Trump to an NPC. You can sit and have a perfectly cordial, normal conversation with somebody for an hour and be fine. And you can mention one of the particular subjects mm. which they are programmed to hate by the matrix itself and they will turn into an agent in real time. And you will see them now start to genuinely, emotionally dislike you as a person. They were your friend for an hour. Yeah. Now they hate you. They will turn into an agent. COVID was perfect. I would sit with people and we'd all be friends until I mentioned that COVID's garbage. And it would... Now they're an agent. What do you mean COVID's garbage? My friend's grandma was 99 and she got sick. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> it doesn't change my view. And they change. And, and the matrix is actually a perfect, absolute explanation of what's happening. And, and Morpheus says it, if your mind's not free, you can be one of them. And that's what's happening. And this is why we have, we don't have competing sets of parameters which are trying to argue about which is the best way to run the world. We have people with parameters who believe in family and love and God and tradition and taking care of yourself and taking care of others. There's people with moral standard and there's people with none, zero, empty vessels, agents who are programmed on any given day of whether, what they're supposed to care about. These people can't tell me they care about things. That's what's most annoying about my position because it's absolutely and utterly weaponized virtue they use against me. The people who hate me, hate me because one, I, I truly believe, and I know this is arrogant to say, but I feel like I have to say it. There's huge, there's definitely a massive jealousy implement. If I wasn't so tall and rich and good looking, it wouldn't be happening. They don't fucking like me. They don't like me because I remind them of the jock at school that took their girl. That's part of it, right? They don't like me personally. So they can't, they try, it's true. So they try and find an attack vector. And what happens when you have somebody who's monumentally successful across all realms of human endeavor, the only way you can attack them is by calling them a bad person. They can't, can't call me stupid, they can't call me ugly, can't call me broke, can't call me weak, can't, they can't call me any of these things. So how do we attack this guy? Well, he's a bad person. How do you call someone a bad person? You weaponize virtue. None of the people, none, who are pretending to give a shit about women and that I'm bad to protect women have any interest in protecting women. None of these people think I better become physically strong to protect women. None of, none of them even believe in protecting a woman in a physical scenario. None of them even believe in protecting their family. None of them have any, none of them donate to any charities that involve women, nothing. They're just taking the virtue and weaponizing it and attacking me with it. Me as a person who donates $25 million a year to charity to feed both male and female children. Me as a person who believes I have a responsibility to be physically capable so that any woman I'm walking down the street with is safe. I do more for women than any of these clowns would ever do but they're just weaponizing virtue and attacking me with it. It's not even genuine virtue. That's what's so upsetting about it. These people, the matrix-minded people, have so few parameters and so few virtue. Whenever there's virtue inside of them, it's only so they can take it, weaponize it, and fire it at you. They don't give a shit about any of the issues they talk about. They don't care about race. They don't care about women. They don't care about gays. None of it. They take it, they put it in a bullet, and they shoot it at the people they don't like. It's all fake. All of it. When you were, when you were talking about this, um... 
I wrote all these things down that we're talking about. Principal virtues, God, parents, true believers, fighters, traditions. These people they fear, right? All these people they fear. And these guys are slowly but surely starting to stand up. The scene we're talking about with Shia LaBeouf, he says what we're doing here is a righteous act. Here's a Bible verse, I think, about sometimes, many times. This is his words. It goes, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And he began crying and said, here I am, send me. Brad Pitt turns around and says, book of Isaiah chapter 6. Minect is an application which allows you to take a minute to connect with influencers from all around the world. My name is Andrew Tate, and I'm available to speak directly to you on Minect. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.